Hello and welcome to a brand new video tutorial in Lightwave 3D. In this episode of uh, Realism in Lightwave, I want to show you step by step how I created this tea time render in Lightwave. So let's get started. All right, so here we are in Lightwave Modeler. And what I have to do now is I have to import all the models that I have prepared for this project into Lightwave Modeler. And then I use this to bring it into layout later on. So I have here my layer palette and here is the first layer. It's unnamed. So I double click and rename this Tatami. Press OK and then go to load load objects into layer there we go and it's modeled in lightwave as you can see very simple just a box with cramfer and then two separate um, texture ids or selection sets to have a bit of variation of a darker and a lighter wood material. So if I go closer here, as you can see, it's a very nice texture of a tatami. Okay, so now I want to bring in the other models as well. So I create a new layer and I rename this T cop. Okay, and load, load object into layer. Okay, so and here you can see it's the the teacup. Okay, and what we do on this one here is we want to bring in the tea into the teacup. So I show you how I did that. So what I want to do here is I want to bring in some tea into the teacup. So how I did that, I select the polygon mode and I selected this polygons right there and then I used the old GR key together with the closed wave bracket to expand the selection right there and then I press control C into a new layer control V and this is our T. Okay. And then into the polygon mode, I select everything and press the Q button to give a new material ID. So this is the T. And then I can go in here and turn on double sided because now what I can do is I can select these upper points right and i can press the p button and then it's close this face here and then i can switch to polygon mode select that polygon press the b for bevel and i bevel that in and press spacebar to drop the tool press tab key and now you can see I have a nice round smooth geometry. So this is our teacup. Okay. So the next object that I want to bring in is the plate. So I rename in a new layer called plate. And again, I'm going into load object and I import this plate, right? Perfect. And so now I have this composition. Okay. So the only thing that I want to do now here is I bring the plate in the background layer so I can work with um, the teacup and the tea. So into polygon mode, I select everything. Let's go modify size. And I shrink that down. 
maybe 70% right there. And then the T to move it up and move it on the side like that. And then I have this asset ready to go. So what I can do now is I can select everything and press the T key and move this up. Right there. So now everything is in place and it looks pretty good to me. So we have uh, two assets remaining to import. Load in the teapot into the scene. Okay, so there it is. And now what I want to do here is I want to bring the teapot in position. Yep, looks good to me. So one last thing is missing, and this is the the table or the the plate where everything is on top of it. So I create a new layer, and I call this table. All right. So here is the the table part, and then what I have to do is I have to select everything and move it up on the position right there somewhere here and then I have to adjust a bit the position of the other parts so all right so now everything is in position and I think we are ready to bring everything into layout all right so now everything is in layout and we are ready to move forward okay so the first thing i do is i change to view and grid size and change this to one meter the next thing is uh, next layout i choose a layout that i have a right view a top view and the perspective camera view okay and then i go in here and I roughly set up the position of the camera, something like that. And then I go to this little corner there and I search for new camera, match viewport perspective, new camera. And I create this and call this shot cam. And I switch to my camera shot cam, perfect. The next thing I do is I go to item, create null, and call this target. And I select my camera, M key, and I select the target. So now my camera is always pointing to that target, right? Okay, just roughly. And then in the camera properties, I tend to use, I like the 85 millimeter cam because it gives a very nice result of a product shot. Perfect. So something like that should be good. So let's get fire up the VPR and see what we have. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. Now we have to adjust the lighting. I select the light and I press the M key here as well, and I go to the target item target. So now the light is pointing directly to my object as well. And I change this light from a distance light to a spotlight. So why I choose a spotlight, you will see that in a moment. Okay, so I bring the spotlight down and I crank up the power, right? 
So what I add now to this spotlight is a projection image. And I would use a gobo that I have from the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library. So I load in my gobo that I used for this project. And when I do this, as you can see, the changes of the light setup and it's creating this really realistic look. The next thing what I do is I select the tatami and I want to move this down and I also want to rotate this guy so that I have this this line in this direction so to create a, a, a nicer um, compositing so that looks really really nice to me and now we work on the T. So the T is very, very simple. In the surface editor, search for the T material. The first thing we have to do is we have to turn down the value. Okay, so now it's black. And then we have to turn 100% the specular. So we have a nice reflection. If you need any more reflection, you can also turn in the clear code if you need right and then the most important thing is transparency so bring this up to 100 so as you can see now the t is disappeared but when you change the refraction index to 1.33 and you change the distance of the transmitting Right, you can see now that it comes in nicely and then change the color to a kind of a T color right there. Just bring that down. So you can see this really, really nice fall off that it's creating here on the T. Perfect. So now one thing that I see here is that it's uh, the white values are blown out. So what you could do in Lightwave is to use a kind of an ACES OT uh, transform lot on top of it. So you can activate this in the backdrop tab, processing, image filter, tone map. In the tone map, change the type from Reinhardt to ACES Filmic. And as you can see, it brings down the high value a bit more, okay? Right there. So notice that this is not the ACES per se. This is just an output transform that will be applied to the image, emulating a kind of an ACES transform, okay? But um, you can use this uh, tone map ACES OT to just bring down the white values a bit on your image. Okay. All right. That looks pretty good to me. So now the last but not least is in the camera, turn on the of the field. And you can see this line here that shows you where is the focus point. And I want the focus point exactly to be on the teacup right there. Okay. So now I'm going to the render, render properties, go to the render and turn on the GPU filter to see a bit faster a result of our image. All right, so that is it. And the last steps that we have to do now is just uh, set up the render properties and then set the output values and the buffers that you need, right? And then basically 
just hit render so I did that and this is the final render out from Lightwave and what I do now is because I exported this as a TIFF 16-bit format I can play around within in Photoshop for the final touch so this is the end of the tutorial I hope you learned something and you like the tutorial if you have any questions or tips and tricks how I can improve my workflow in Lightwave please let me know in the comments and as always please like subscribe and comment to help this channel to grow thanks you for listening thanks for watching and see you next time bye everyone